Welcome to the Painter Marketing Mastermind Podcast, the show created to help painting company owners build a thriving painting business that does well over $1 million in annual revenue. I'm your host, Brandon Pierpont, founder of Painter Marketing Pros and creator of the popular PCA educational series, Learn, Do, Grow, Marketing for Painters. In each episode, I'll be sharing proven tips, strategies, and processes from leading experts in the industry on how they found success in their painting business. We will be interviewing owners of the most successful painting companies in North America and learning from their experiences. In this series titled Mindset Matters Most, Juan Vasquez of Illusions Painting will be discussing his journey from being a day-to-day painting contractor to becoming a profitable business owner with a vision for his company. In episode one, this episode, Juan will be discussing his past life, how his business used to look. In episode two, Juan will share the experience that opened his eyes and changed his life and what happened next. In episode three, Juan will deep dive into all the transitions necessary for his business after his mindset changed. In episode four, Juan will open up the hood and detail what illusions painting looks like today. And in episode five, the final episode, Juan will lay out his thoughts regarding lack of self-confidence and stereotypes and the initiatives he is currently conducting to help lift up other contractors. If you want to ask Juan questions related to anything in this podcast series, you can do so on our exclusive Painter Marketing Mastermind podcast forum on Facebook. Just search for Painter Marketing Mastermind podcast forum on Facebook and request to join the group or type in the URL facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Painter Marketing Mastermind. Again, that URL is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash painter marketing mastermind. There you can ask Juan questions directly by tagging him with your question so you can see how anything discussed here applies to your particular painting company. Juan, thanks for coming, man. Hey, Brandon. Thank you for having me, man. Super excited to do this series with you, brother. No, same here, man. I've uh, been waiting and getting everything going and I'm like, all right, let's get into it. So uh, thank you for I'm having right. me. You've been, uh, you've been wondering how we're going to fill up five full episodes whereas i've been kind of wondering how we're going to actually keep it contained because you and i like to talk man that's that's what we were saying just please uh just keep me keep me under just please just, like, no man I, pull, I love pull, it. pull the pull the rope please <laughs> like the uh like the bugs bunny with the uh with like the little cane uh, pull, pull him off the stage right yeah yeah that's um, what you may need to do that <laughs> yeah i don't think so i think we got it man let's get yeah. into this so this episode just to preface for everybody you know, for, for a lot of people listening and maybe yeah. describing what you're currently doing for some people, maybe describing what you used to do. Um, yeah. but this is going to be the past life. Yeah. Right? It's going to be Uh-oh. what it used to be. Yeah, no. And we were discussing to see how many uh, skeletons you wanted me to pull out. And you said all of them. I'm like, I don't um, know, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> nothing, nothing that, uh, nothing that the FBI is interested in things like oh, that. We yeah, can leave no. those, but the other stuff. Uh, I, I kind of sort them out already and put them to the side. So. Yeah, put those ones away. Yeah, we don't we don't want to want to say those out. I don't, don't want to yeah. have to be. Yeah, I don't have to figure that part out. <laughs> we don't have to go for, uh, build a uh, go find me to get rescue one. <laughs> <laughs> get one out. <laughs> get one out. Yeah. No, nah, man. Uh, thank you so much for having me. You know, it's just uh, it's such a um, I don't know, such a great pleasure to be able to show and and share. Uh, I mean, some of the things that I guess all us painters, we go through, um, and not just painters, I think everybody in their businesses um, go through and, uh, you know, it's really great when you're having a business that's probably being successful, but there's a lot behind it. And thank you so much. Because of this, I was kind of like reminiscing a little bit this last couple of days and kind of like going through things that happen. Sometimes we don't do that. And it made me realize, you know, we've, we've come a long way. And it's, it's kind of cool. It's almost an exercise in gratitude, right? When you, you, cause you were so busy thinking about what's still wrong in our businesses or what we still need to do. And you look back and it's like, holy God, like I, I used to do that. I, that <laughs> used to be my company. You know, um, we talk about how, uh, like there's a point where you're like, you just wanted a job and yeah. just, let me just get one job and that'll get me through, pay my bills. And then. I worry about the next one. Now we're thinking about years ahead and all this planning and five-year you know, plan. And and, stuff. And, um, but yeah, I guess it all comes down with that. So um, no, I mean, you let me know how um, what you want to know, who wants to want to know, and uh, we're here. You know, open book. Yep. Try to show my share some of my stories, how I got to where we are now. 
I love it, man. Yeah, let's, I guess let's back up prior to when you first started painting. Mm-hmm. Let's kind of lead into, I guess, how your journey started with painting. Uh, so for those who don't know me, uh, like I said, my, you mentioned my name is Juan Vazquez. I was born in Oaxaca, Mexico, and the very beautiful state. Um, I was I was brought in here by my parents uh, when I was 12 years old. So I, like many other migrant uh, kids from all over the, the world, we come to this um, country, you know, with um, with an illusion. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> it's just perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with with a dream, you know, everybody tells the American dream that you're going to have everything that you beautiful, that the life is going to be beautiful. And from some of us, from our past, in our, in our you know, countries of, um, you know, birth, it was pretty tough. So like I said, I got here when I was 12 years old. Um, I went to middle school in, uh, in Santa Cruz, California. Um, after that, I went, to, I was, believe it or not, I was very, uh, very good in school. I really enjoyed school. Um, went into high school, parents were always working. Um, I really always liked art. So art was my art and music was always my, you know, my to go things to do. And I always thought that we, me and my brother-in-law were going to build a, um, a business, uh, painting cars. We were going to make these low riders, you know, back in the days oh, awesome. and we're going to build them and we're going to paint them and do all these things, which, you know, we got to realize that there's not a lot of money in there. So I'm like, okay, scratch that. Um, I was 16 years old uh, when my girlfriend in high school told me that she was pregnant and uh, changed my life. Yeah, 16 years old, uh, didn't know what I was going to do, not a lot of support. I remember I worked at Burger King for uh, a few months and um, never thought I would paint. You know, I'm, I'm in painting, what's painting, you know? And um, funny how I started because uh, I had a neighbor and I found out that I was going to have a boy that day and I had a neighbor and I'm sitting down outside my house, you know, 16 years old, boy, 16 year old boy, not knowing what his life is going to look like. All his dreams are just tumbling down, you know, and um, going to have a kid and you're a kid yourself. So my neighbor saw me being all sad and then um, he, uh, you know, we're talking, what's going on? I say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. I'm going to have a kid. And he starts laughing and making jokes. And then, um, <laughs> you know, shoot, but I remember that very clearly. And I'm like, you're screwed. I'm like, thank you. That's you know, so funny, you, man. Is that way, you know, that is so uh, funny. And um, so uh, I'm like, he goes like, you know, I, oh, because I told him I was working at Burger King. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I mean, this is only like a fun job. I was like, hey, you know, would you ever thought about painting? I'm like, well, no. He was like, oh, I work at a company. He used to work at a company. And then uh, basically he was like, hey, you know, you're, um, see, and so, you know, in construction, a lot of the Hispanics, you know, other labor is done by the Hispanic community. And so here there's no difference in California. So he goes, hey, um, he was like, well, hey, you're young, you speak English. He was like, that is going to be a big one. If I can tell my, you know, my boss that, you know, I have you and, you know, he'll give you a job. So, you know, okay, fine. So I went and and asked, you know, his name is Sal. Uh, um, He is from uh, Italy. Tough guy. Um, Learned a lot of good and bad things from him. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of you know <laughs> but it's good you know <laughs> yeah learned a lot oh learned a lot you know so um i guess um you know back and forth started working with them uh i was 16 years old seven, i had just turned 17 years old my son was born and um you know that motivated me to work you know i got into a lot of issues before i had my son but after I had my son, it really, it turned everything, you know, around and uh, kind of, um, I guess it was like, you know, now I have someone that uh, relies on me and I have to be that person. And so, yeah, painting was my escape, man. And um, I started painting 
Um, by the time I was 18 years old, I was running crews all over the, not all over the country, but we used to travel quite a bit to do uh, commercial jobs like Marriott. And um, so I used to run crews of like 10, 16 people when I was 18 years old. Wow. And the only reason why is because I knew how to speak English. So I can communicate with the, uh, you know, generals and with whoever was running the job and with my boss directly. And so that kind of gives me a little push, you know, into the business. Um, that's how I started painting. Okay. Um, ah, there's so much. I don't want to, I don't want to bore you there. But, Man, you're um... not boring me. I love this. <laughs> this is story time. You know, and then so after, you know, I've learned, like I said, the good and the bad. I, I've learned that in some of these commercial jobs, um, it was very tough to make a living because you really, my boss didn't have systems like we do now, right? Um, so it was more like the more you can push them and the more you can cut back on, on material, the, 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 that's the only way we can make money, profit, because mm. competitive, you know, it was very competitive. And so I was like, okay. It's like so ride we, ride the guys really hard, try to skimp. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I never model. really, <laughs> I never really liked Perfect. that. You know, I was like, I, can, I can't do that. And so because of that, I moved on to um, after doing that for four years, moved on to a company that did nothing but um, uh, custom job, uh, custom homes. So moving to that uh, company, I worked there for five years. So I've learned the proper way to do things, you know, <laughs> the proper way to use the paint, the proper way to, I mean, go about the whole thing except the business, but just the whole painting aspect of the business. So I guess that that really prepared me to going into the business myself because now I know what not to do and what to do. That's what I thought, right? So, um, a lot of challenges, I think, throughout these years. Uh, for me, it was the language barrier. Um, I was in school for four years, a total of four years. And um, so I was very shy. I wasn't very, like, um, I didn't feel, like, that I belong in certain places, you know? I didn't think that, um, like, to me, I was like, I'm a painter. So it was hard for me to walk into certain offices or or talk to some other contractors that probably had some bigger jobs because uh, I don't know I just didn't feel the confidence at that moment and for that reason you know um, I went on my own in two thousand six. Um, this was after this was you had been working for the custom the the painting company I worked with custom home building for four years. So I worked there yes for four years. Okay. And um, I guess, you know, as painters and as professionals, we all have different unique talent talents, right? Um, I was never the guy that, the, I mean, I like to know what I'm applying, how things work, but, I'm, but I've always thought that there was more to it. And I remember always talking to my boss about like, what can I do in your business, you know, other than painting? I... <laughs> Till this day, I still have this, and I, I had these these quote that I always used to say. It was like, "I don't want to be sixty pushing a brush." Hmm. That to me, that was like, "I don't want to be sixty pushing a brush." Um, I saw a lot of people, a lot of the uh, old timers, you know, the painters. They're fifty, sixty, and they're you know working out of the truck, and they're you know they're surviving, but that's all they have. They have yeah. a job that they've done their whole life, and that's something I didn't want it to do. And so with that mentality, I was always looking to for ways, but it was my lack of uh, knowledge, my lack of awareness. And back then, you know, I'm talking, we're talking about what, 20, 16 years ago, there wasn't a lot of social media. I mean, I don't really have a lot of pictures from back then because it's not like now that you, Everything you see, you pull out your phone, you're like, picture, 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 so you can remember. Back then, it wasn't like that. So um, so I was just always thought that by as long as I stay busy, as long as I, I was a good painter, I was going to be okay. But it didn't feel like enough. 
you know? And so um, I guess that's always, it, it always kept me like wondering what else can I do? What else can I do? How can I do one, how can one person create something more than, than just, well, myself, I can only do so much. Right. How can I become I, that person? Right. It's like Jason, uh, Jason Phillips says, hard work isn't scalable. You know, no, or, it, the labor that you're thinking about with the, with the painting, you can only do so much. You can only get so good. You're going to cap out. Well, it's true. You know, I mean, there's, there's only so much you can do. Um, and I think that um, the biggest thing when I, what really got me to grow was understanding that um, there are ways there's, um, I've always been very involved in, in things. So I like to volunteer a lot. So I used to volunteer back then. And one of the things I've always been around is older people. And so it's always interesting to hear their stories and, and how they regretted not doing certain things that they wanted to do. And, um, and I guess at a young age, you kind of get frustrated because you're like, I know I want to do this. I just don't know how. And then those limitations kind of get you more down because like you, you want to, and you just feel that the more you do, just just doesn't come out there, you know. And uh, a, I was uh -huh. there. There's a book that I read just with you talking uh -huh. about how you volunteered um, with some elderly elderly people and uh -huh. kind of what they would tell you. So there's this book uh, by someone named Bronnie Ware. I'm very Bronnie big Ware. into also learning from you know people who who know more than me. Right. Uh -huh, yes. <laughs> so there's this book that the top five regrets of the dying. The five times the okay, top I gotta, five I regrets of the dying. I would definitely anyone listening who who likes to learn from elders. It was someone who worked in a hospice. So it's people who were facing death. You know they were going to pass away, and and they she got to just hear a whole lot about regrets and I I forget exactly what they were, but definitely it was more regretting not doing things. You know that was a really big theme. Not going yeah. for things. Not being true to true to yourself, worrying about what society thinks, allowing fear to really impede uh, your progress or what you want to do. There was basically no, well, I wish I hadn't gone for it, or I wish I had played it safer. That didn't really play a part. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you, hit, you hit the nail, man. I'm yeah. serious. I think we all go through those stages, right, in our lives where we just think that we have to be doing this, that we have to be doing that. And then you realize that, I mean, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading a book right now. It's called The Mountain Is You. And um, same thing, same principle, you know, it just talks about how we just, uh, we're our own worst enemies, you know, and, and that's very true for me. So if we go back to talking about um, how I got into painting, uh, I think that a lot of us don't get into painting and say, hey, you know what? When I grow up, I'm going to be a painter, a house yeah. painter, by the way. And I'm not a fancy, like, and Mark, you know, Mark Angelo painter, but a house painter. I don't think we all go through that. I mean, um, I, I think, think most of all... us do. I mean, I don't think anyone thinks about being like a sports, you know, like like an athlete or a celebrity or. Yeah. I think most people are like, I want to, I want to paint houses that's the, <laughs> right not, not like a police officer you know those are those are things that children don't that's think just about. overrated man Come children on. are always thinking about hey i want to paint houses when i'm older hey after this whole movement that's going on man i wouldn't be surprised the next generation it, it is man people are waking up to the opportunity right i'm like if i can be all over the place and be a painter and show how to do this and you know it's, put it's on my 18 roller 18 20 inch roller and paint something cool but um but you know i think there's a lot of people that can relate in 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 um on how we get into the painting business i think that a lot of us is more out of necessity and um but we don't realize that at, at that young age you know i didn't realize that you know that you can do that you can grow and then you can continue learning we at that, so one in his 20s was the guy was the kid that thought that he knew everything, you know? Juan got a check, I, I remember this is a funny thing, you know? The first big check I got, it was a $5,000 check. Top of the world, man. I can, God, I, guess, I can tell to you, it was one of those times where I'm like, 
I felt invincible. I'm like, yeah. God, I got five thousand dollars. I didn't realize later that from those five thousand dollars, you gotta pay taxes, you gotta pay everything else that comes involved, and you're like, um, I kept five hundred. What? <laughs> <laughs> Revenue versus net income. Is there a difference? Oh, turns out. Um, big difference. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, growing up, I, I guess a lot of people get into issues because we don't inform ourselves. I got into issues because I had a, a I mean, you know what a tax lien is, right? I do. Yes. So unfortunately, a 20 year old, 20 year old Juan that the, he didn't need to pay his uh, taxes. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I just. If I forget about it, they will forget about it. Yeah. Well, guess what? You know, I horror awakening. I remember having uh, having to pay my taxes, and every time I paid my taxes, well, one day actually they just opened my account. They took everything I had out of my account. You know, IRS just. Oh wow! Boom! Uh, it wasn't even five thousand because I didn't have five thousand. <laughs> it was like they took, they took the five hundred. They took, they took the <laughs> everything that was there, and it just left us there you know and and those are tough um they teach us a good lesson they teach us to to learn to educate ourselves back then i I mean like i said we're talking about all these times that i mean you're just making me remember all these things i'm like how is it that i be became this far how come that i just didn't throw the towel did you um I mean, this went through before COVID, you know, I think that, um, not, not before COVID, but we had a crash in 2000, 2007, 2008. About 2008, yeah, with the housing recession and everything. So, you know, I know that we're going to cover this and to the next one, but yeah. it was so like, you know, it was so great. We were all busy. Um, I remember having, I was the guy who... We'll go find a job. Um, I will go ahead and uh, set the job. So this is how I used to run my business, right? Really quick, and a lot of people can can uh, relate. Um, I will get the call, make the sale. Um, you should be, I got to the point where I had two crews. And in California, um, staff contracting is not very big. So it was me and, and, and four other guys, so three other guys. So what I would do is I would have two jobs going most of the time. And there will be, um, they will do all the preparation. I will go from one place. I will do the spraying, the painting. Then half of my day will run into the next job and do the, you know, the finishes on that job. In the morning, go sell more jobs. At night, come home and do your paperwork or, or you know, whatever it is. Just, um, I I stopped working with my boss for two years prior to having my license. And at that time, I was 23 years old. So I was a little rebel. So I was like, I don't need a license. I can do this. I can do that. You knew everything, man. <laughs> I knew everything. You know, of course. I knew more than I know now. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. I don't, I don't know how you lost all that knowledge. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, man, there's so much to remember. Um Thinking how we, I mean, we go day to day. Yeah. Um, we got to many times where, so um, I'm maybe skipping a little bit here, um, but I'm just trying to stay within the contents of this, of this era, For right? Sure. Of For one. Sure. Let's do it. And so, hmm, where, where will we want to touch on more? What do you think that will be more to touch? What, and before we got before we got into the the contractor, I mean, this is still me being the painter. Maybe some challenges that I had as a painter. Yeah, let's let's kind of talk about I guess how you started it, right? So you you knew you wanted to do something more. Mm -hmm. You were you were painting. You were working with the the company that works for the custom home builds. Um, really it seems like there wasn't really going to be more opportunity for you there than painting. And so you knew you wanted to do something more. So you, you headed off and let's kind of talk about, I guess, what that, what that looked like. Well, if we look at that era, um, I think that, um, I had, I had a, I had a choice to make, um, with my, with my boss and I can say his name. I love the guy. I still stay in contact. His name is Greg. Um, 
he actually was a, a very, he still is a very great guy. We still stay in contact. We still, you know, talk to each other. Um, he treated me pretty good. You know, like, yeah. honestly, I had to make a choice because with him, I, I had a very comfortable place to work, uh, make my own hours. That. Yeah, it is very hard to live that, you know. So, um, I mean, if if I was to be pleased with that, I mean, I wouldn't go anywhere else because I was very happy. I mean, he paid me enough. I can make my own hours. Um, but then I guess it was uh, the little person inside of you, you know, like saying, what else can you do? Can you go and, and move on? And I think um, I've always been very ahead of myself. Like I always think ahead. And so one day uh, we go back to the same thing now. I talked to him and I, I said, hey, Greg, um, let's have a talk. And he's like, yeah. Um, I'm like, hey, uh, well, you know what? Uh, I'm like, uh, is there anything else I can do in your company other than painting? And he goes, um, no. Um, what do you say? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, can I do maybe some office work and I maybe start training with you to sell more work? I don't know. Do something. I'm like, I don't want. This. I have something again white against whites. Okay. Like my pants, like I always say, like, I, I'm like, Juan, this is getting weird, man. <laughs> Oops, let me, I, I gotta clarify that, okay? Yeah. Oh, God. So for me, wearing my, you know, my, my, my painter whites, um, it was like, to me, it was like, I feel like a painter still. I don't know. I don't know how to explain sure. that. And some people might be, yeah, you're crazy, man. I, I know Nick. Probably sleeps in his whites, right? <laughs> but um, but I didn't, I didn't want to have him. You know, I, I didn't want to use him. I think for me it was more of the what it represented. You know, I think at the moment for me it represented that if I was in my whites, I was that painter. And the minute I can walk out of those whites, I would be a painter without whites. I don't know. <laughs> but. Uh, but that was kind of like the thing. I told him that um, I, I talked to him and I said, hey, Greg, you know, I want to um, I want to do something else in your company. And he basically didn't give me the opportunity. And we do big homes. We um, we used to work on homes that were there for a year or so painting. And so um, um, he said, oh, you know, no, there's nothing I can offer you. And say, you know what? Let me finish this project for you. And then I move on to my, you know, to do something else. And he's like, yeah, no problem. A month goes by and then I give him a call and say, hey, Greg, um, um, this, uh, sorry. So I go talk to him and say, hey, Greg, I'm, I'm getting close to the job to be done. Um, can you send someone so I can train him and tell him where everything's at because I'm going to be moving, moving on. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, you know, I, we have this talk and I'm like, uh, I'm leaving. God. Yeah, he's like, do you want more money? I can give you more money. What do you need? I can get you a truck. And so he's, like I said, but it wasn't about that. It, it was more of the, you know, new horizons, you know, trying to new benchmarks, I guess, for me. And um, so he goes like, okay, you know. So I left. Um, I finished training the guy. And you know the funny thing is that he is the one who actually gave me my one of my biggest jobs in the beginning. So he was the guy who um, uh, actually called me. He's like, "Hey, you know what? I have a good client. Uh, I didn't tell him you don't have a license, but uh, he's looking for someone to do this. You want to do it?" It's like, "Yeah." So you know, he kind of helped me to go on my own, even if he didn't want to. We talked for about six months, and he will call, and he needed some help, and I will help and stuff and then he calls me about six months later and he was like you know what you ain't coming back <laughs> i'm like no you know but i'm like hey well we can work together i've always been about that that i can maybe help you and you can help me yeah. so we started working together you know there was jobs that he didn't want to take on and i would be like i'll take him for you and um for me it was great because i didn't have to go look at the job i wasn't making maybe as much money but I had a consistency in, in my workflow. So he and would refer so, jobs that weren't a good fit for him. He'd refer them to you. Exactly. Okay. Or exactly. He would just basically will call the contractor and say, hey, you know what? I I can't do him, but Juan is the guy and he will do it for you. And 
he worked for me and that was it, you know, the job yeah. was sold. And so um, I guess, you know, learning to have a good, co a good communication and actually providing value to other people is, it, it's very, um, it's very powerful. Yeah, that's and how for, end, in life, you should always right? be striving for that. Yeah. But you have to, you have to be, and I think that's something as human beings and, and as professionals need to have that present that there's always sometimes what you give, you're going to reach, you're going to get a lot more in return. Sure. And so that's, that's been a model for me, um, you know, in the painting business. Um, so basically that's how this whole thing started. You know, that's how I got to get my license. Um, I mean, we can talk about a lot of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many personal issues involved, you know, kids, family, and stuff. I don't know if that's something we want to touch on, but you I think know. we should. I think we should. So let's say you know you left the the home builder, and it's okay. I mean this this episode is just about what happened, right? It's just yeah, about what yeah, what the yeah. what the business used to look like. If the episode is maybe a tiny bit messy, good, because yeah. the, this was too. <laughs> So the, you know, you started the, um, your, your company, right? Mm -hmm. I know, I know it wasn't officially yet. I'm going to let you kind of get into what that looked like, yeah. but you started the company six, six months. You were still sort of helping with the previous owner and, mm -hmm. and company a little bit, and then you stopped and then he was referring you. So let's get into, I guess, what that now looked like for you. So it's, it's post six months after you left the other company, you're full time yeah. on, on yours. Let's get into maybe the, the day to day. Um, kind of what your weeks and your months look like and maybe where your headspace was at, how you were thinking about yeah. things. Um, so it all started really great. Um, but at that at that time, you know, um, if we go back to um, back in time, I um, I had separated with my son's mom. So I was going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And so imagine um, starting your business, going through a divorce in your early 20s with a child, not knowing what to expect out of life it, it's a big well, mess you're stressing me out man you're stressing me out <laughs> right i'm telling you that's what i'm like god do i want to i don't want to imagine day? that man <laughs> so that usually how the business started you know i was in that mentality and uh as much as i want to make it very nice and oh my god it was just all these great help i had a lot Butterflies of and rainbows man oh yeah <laughs> You know, we had, um, I had a lot of those times where um, it just wasn't clear. You know, your mind is so fog and you're trying to raise a, you know, a, a son. My son was about six years old. Um, trying to find your place in life, you know, I'm 23, 24 years old. Um, left, you know, the company that you feel comfortable, that paid your bills. And now you have to go hustle and 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 find new jobs, you know. So, like I said, I left in two thousand six. So two thousand six, um, I got a divorce. Uh, I started the business. Um, it it was really it was good and not good. <laughs> I used to be called the kid. So there was a project that I did um, that I've always liked to create something unique. And um, I had a challenge to do these doors that they were fiberglass and to uh, make them look like walnut. So I did all the graining and I, you know, made them beautiful. So the guy who saw the doors comes to the job and he's like, he's like, hey, where did you, he has the contract. He's like, where did you get your doors from? He was like, I got them from you. It's like, no, he's like, I don't sell those doors. Oh, that's he's like, awesome, yeah, they're man. your doors. And like, and he's touching them. He's like, they're fiberglass. And like, yeah. Oh, it's like, I don't know. And it's like, illusion. So no, I, illusion. But, that, but that's where we get, right? Oh, that, like, oh, I ruined it. I'm not ruined even it. there I'm sorry, yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Juan. <laughs> no, so they were like, oh, no, I know this kid, and he is good. So, for a long time, I was the kid, the kid who can do finishes, the kid, the kid. Mm. So the kid like got referred, gun. right? Yeah. So 
so he goes, um, he goes like, oh, I got this kid. You got to meet him. His name is Juan. I was like, cool. So that guy goes and tells the other contractor, like, man, it's like I found this kid and he is good. And he's building his son's uh, house, right? So he wants all these fancy finishes. And uh, I came over there. He's like, hey, um, I don't know what you did, but this guy is telling you and blah, blah, blah. And uh, you want to come paint for me? And it's like, yeah. So we did his son's house. So this day, I still work for his son's and for his son. Uh, the Serrano construction he when he retired and his son took over the company so so these days we do big projects with them and this is the first oh, cool. project that I did with him you know in 2006 2007 so what I'm gonna what I was kind of referring to is like I went from really? being the kid and to Juan and to the painter and to you know illusion you know and it's like it's it's the, all those little things that you don't realize. And now that I'm here talking to you, I'm like, oh, man, how did I do that? Nowadays, I'm like, man, I was probably, I was more, I think I was looking at it. I think we're more brave back then than we are now. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I feel that way. Yeah, I feel that way. You get a little more risk averse, you fall down a couple more times. You're like, you know what? I actually kind of hurts <laughs> a lot. I don't want to keep falling down. <laughs> right like right now it's like you know yeah like i don't i take chances i take chances every day but um but i think i would I, I, these are more calculated risks yeah back then was like i remember it's like jump i'm like they say jump and i'm already down there you know yeah like, they're like hold on <laughs> i don't know if, so, if brave's the right word but we'll just say brave that sounds good uh, <laughs> that's a good word that we can yeah, use right it's a nice word. <laughs> yeah so um and and you know i think there's a lot of people and you know uh we'll get to this later on in the series um but i've been able to talk to a lot of painters in that situation and it it lets me relieve relieve everything again and i'm like man like um like we made this, you know, I, I got to tell you, I, I, for a long time, I had a lot of issues. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, I really didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable. Um, I didn't really feel that I probably was the guy uh, that everyone should be like paying all this money to paint their homes. I'm like, how is one you know, what's one, you know, who's one to be like, oh, this is what you got to do. So I was always a little more timid, more afraid of like speaking my mind, you know. Um, Did you say I, it's, it was like an imposter syndrome of sorts? You felt you didn't? Uh, no, not like that. I think it's it's more of our culture, you know, it's right. like um, I, it, it's um, uh in in our culture, a lot of uh, a lot of times, like when we, when I was starting to work on my own, people would be like, "What are you doing? Like, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna do this, and you're not gonna do that." And and I guess in the back of your mind, you know, you're like, "They're probably right." You know, so, I, because you were an immigrant from Mexico. Yeah, that's how you felt, and that's how other people. That's basically what they were saying to you. Yeah, you know, and um, I think in in my younger years, my I still have a big accent, but. But when I was younger, I had it was even more. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was kind of like uh, it was nerve wracking talking to a client, you know, and, mm -hmm. and why should you hire me? You know, and but I was trying to sell this immigrant kid, you know, and I guess at that moment, um, that's where I've kind of like, got, you know, now I think about it, I'm like, that's right. Because that was for me. That was that was um, for quite some time. I really didn't feel good in my skin, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 it had to do a lot with uh, being a migrant kid, you know, being a minority, a minority, uh, a high school dropout, uh, dropout, um, like you know, your own family, your own friends say like, man, I, I remember like. Most of our, most of my friends in their early twenties, they're going to college and attending parties and doing all these things. And here I am, working, uh, 
with my hands full of paint. I had a really beat up truck and and all these kids are driving around in like a car and clean clothes. And I guess it just kind of it dawns on you, you know, you're like, am I really doing something? Or am I really just another loser, you know? And uh, yeah, it, it, it messes with you. And that's why, you know, mentality is so big, you know, at that point, having that mentality is what's holding you down. It is, man. It's and and I haven't obviously experienced it in the way that you have, but in terms of of comparing myself mm-hmm. to other people, oh, right? Yeah. When you choose the when you choose the entrepreneurial path, there's usually a dip would be probably a a, uh, a euphemism here, right? There's like kind of a nosedive yes. in terms of your life. Oh um, yeah, that you sort of have to go through, and you compare it with people who are maybe pursuing more traditional routes. You know, going to school, uh, getting jobs. You know, it's quote unquote safe right? The same yes. route. Uh, it can, you can start to entrepreneurship takes a bit, right? Takes it, takes, yeah. takes a second to click. Uh, so you can be going on and going on. And then you're looking in the mirror one day, you're like, am I an idiot? Like, or am I just playing a joke <laughs> on myself? Like, am I totally delusional with my life right now? Or are we actually getting somewhere? Yeah. No, that, that, God, that, that's very true. <laughs> right. I mean, and I'm pretty sure you, have you felt that? <laughs> yeah, I have. Right. But yeah, you so, had you had challenges on top that I did not have, you know, especially when you're having to interact with with homeowners with really nice, nice homes. I mean, I gotta imagine that was uh challenging to say the least. You know, um uh, there was a very big stereotype, uh at least for me growing up. Um I have uh you know, I, I remember that uh, and maybe it's a little irrelevant, but this is part of me. I like I love tattoos, right? And so I remember about, that's that. why I have that really nice face tattoo. tattoo <laughs> yeah, <awesome>. right. Yeah. <laughs> just... uh, I cover this one. I can't do it there yet. Yeah. I was gonna do my neck at one point, and I right. am so glad I did it. Oh my god, I was like I would choke myself now, but you know, but yeah, more it than sounded anything, like a I... good idea at the time. The 23 <laughs> oh, year old god, mom, was... get it done, man. Come on. And I'm not using a couple of things, okay. Young Juan was bullhead, big old baggy clothes, thinking he's badass and, and driving Stupid. a little low rider car. Yeah. You know, ends up in in county and ends up in jail for quite some time. And uh, uh, goes through a lot of those uh, very harsh steps, you know, as a, as a teenager. And I get out of there and I remember that when I started painting, um, I had a... Um, Oh, I had an um, an eyebrow piercing. <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm just foolish, you know? I remember one day I had a really nice time, super nice, elderly. Um, I've been doing work for her for a couple of years. One day I show up to her house and I don't have the piercing. <laughs> and she comes up to me and I, I can never remember, rem- rem- I can never forget this. She goes, she goes Oh my God! She's like, yeah. Can I say something to you? And I'm like, okay. It's like, um, don't take it bad, but I am so glad you took the piercing out. <laughs> I was like, um, okay. She's like, I'm sorry, but you're such a lovely man, and with that, you looked, you looked scary. And I'm like, oops. <laughs> it's like, um, okay. <laughs> so never mind. Never put on any type of earrings anymore. Yeah. Um, tattoos. I always had tattoos, but it had to be covered. I I I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be pursued as this guy tattooed Mexican. As I wanted to inspire. Um, God, I don't know. What, I wanted to inspire trust in my clients. And when I'm walking into these, you know, million dollar homes, and 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 I'm gonna be char- in charge of the job. I wanted to be presentable. You know, whatever I did on my own time, if I can cover it, then I'm fine, you know. And <laughs> so for the longest, I think I didn't put a tattoo anywhere lower in my sleeve until I was way in my 30s. Because that that's when I got my confidence, you know. But back then it was like, I can't do it, you know. And it was it was um I guess it was the fear of not being of being looked different. Of doing you know, so I grew up with a lot of that stuff. I don't know if some a lot of people don't, and um, I never really talk about it because it doesn't bother me at all now. 
but at some point it was big in my life, you know? Yeah. No, I think I'm glad you are talking about it, Juan. I think it's, it's uh, a thing a lot of people struggle with, you know, whether in some, some way, shape or form, I think people, almost all people struggle with this in some capacity or have struggled with it, especially entrepreneurs, business owners, um, you know, won't all be the same things that you've gone through, but well, it, it might be something else. I guess in the painting and the construction industry, um, you see a lot more of that. You see a lot of more people. I think in the in the past, it has been more seen as like the a, not a dirty industry, but an industry that is not well educated. That is more like, oh, if you don't make it or if you don't have a traditional job, you're gonna end up there. Mm. You know, um, at least it's that's how it's seen in our in our culture. And in our area, for a lot of reasons, you know, like I said, at that point, I used to see that my friends were going to college and they're, you know, they're getting their traditional jobs and, and, and stuff. And here you are, like, painting and, and having to walk around with dirty hands and um, and not seeing, I guess, the, the big picture. That's yeah. a big business. But at the point, we didn't see it, you know? Sure. I think for, you know, obviously most of the people who listen to this podcast own painting companies or work at painting companies, mm -hmm. right? They're usually in the industry. Thank God. Thank God that's the perception and has been the perception of the painting industry. Thank God, because it presents such a remarkable opportunity. You want to Isn't be it? in an industry that's been overlooked. You certainly yeah. don't want to be in the, the hot, sexy industry. You better be really, really smart and really good. If you want to win in the hot, sexy industry, I would rather compete in the industry that's been overlooked. That's not, not good enough, man. I'll compete there all day long. Thank God. Well, I like the way you put it because this, this is true. You know, now you can actually make it sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. hundred percent. You that's make where, it sexy. Yeah. We're, trying. Are, We're right? trying. We're trying. I don't make, you make it sexy. So you, so for people who are listening, you know, most people, most people listen, most people mm -hmm. don't stream the video we do record yeah, these we in video and you exactly. can look at our our beautiful mugs if you do that but Juan <laughs> has the coolest the uh, absolute coolest color wall behind him in his home office oh, what's what is it what color is this god i got i should have been prepared okay if you if you guys bring it next bring it episode two that's what i'm saying please yeah. you gotta listen to episode two and i'll, I'll have the color the sherwin williams color cool. But it is cool. So hopefully next time I order the frame that's going to go behind me. So uh, you'll yeah. see. We got to stay tuned so we can see that what it's going to look like. So it's like a, cool. uh, it's like a vortex. Like I thought it was I thought it was a filter of some kind. It is a very neat gray that just you kind of get lost in. Believe it or not, it's green. Are you serious? Yeah. It doesn't look to me at all. It, it, um, so it has this green kind of oh kind of grayish tone to it so depending on that day so like i like it because at night and at night it's beautiful in here i just like to come in here um i live out in the country so we have i can see my cow the cows we got strawberry fields so i'm right on the corner of the house this was my mom's room so i'm in i'm in the corner of the house with the only balcony in the house so um, I like it. It's beautiful. Man, it's cool. beautiful. You go out there and, and, and enjoy it. Uh, you know, um, I guess um, when we're young, we have goals of things that we want to have and, and whatnot. Um, for me, as a place where I can, I, I say a hiding place. I, I, I always see a place where I can find, where I can go. Not I, I say hide. Where, where you can just go and you feel comfortable, where you can center yourself. Um, and this is what I'm trying to build here. From the Probably color show up for episode five, you'll you'll be like logging onto the computer. I was knocking <laughs> on your front door, I'll be like, "Wow, we're doing this one in person, man." <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. Hey, I'm gonna be in Florida for a few weeks for what three, four times this year, so. I'm going to come visit you. I'm, I'm in Florida, Florida, man. We'll be we're hanging, hanging out, out there. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to set it up. Let's do it. <laughs> so. Um, go ahead. All right. No, no. I just, I want to, we got about 10 minutes left. Mm -hmm. So I want to get into, um, 
I guess, a little bit later on in your journey. So you've been running. I know you and I talked about this previous, you know, before we started the episode, I think you ran it basically how you ran it for around 10 years, right? Yeah, um, 10 years. Uh, so from 2006 uh, to two, uh, 2017, basically 2018, um, I ran the business with a mentality of just being busy, you know, stay busy, uh, stay busy exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, the day to day painter, you know, we we go to work, uh, we get a job. Um, you know, nowadays you hear about like job costing and all these things that back then for me, those were, uh, I mean, back then you just basically, you work. Uh, I remember we used to get, a, you know, I'll get a job. I'll get, let's say I have two weeks to do this job. I'm already counting that uh, for this job, I have to go. I have to get my guys set up for one day. The next day I come and do my work and then, it was very hard to stay ahead of myself because I had to do a lot of this myself. So um, I couldn't get so ahead of myself. I couldn't book so much more because the only booking time I had was like either early in the morning or in the afternoons. And you were out um, there managing the project painting. You were all I would do, I was the finisher. And um, so um from day one, I've always wanted to do something unique, some something that no one else can do. I wanted to be the guy who can do something, you know, unique. And so I will always set up myself to do so. A lot of my guys wouldn't get that, you know. They would be like, uh, why? Why do you want to do it like that? I'm like, because this is what I want. They were like, but that's not how you do it. <laughs> I hear a funny one. Um, I had, I used to paint with, I used to work with, uh, with my old painter and with my old boss and there was a painter, his name is Rodrigo. And so, uh, we always argue on how we painted a door jam. That was our argument. <laughs> he goes, he will start from the top and start and, and start painting down. And I'll be the one like, no, I got to start from the bottom. I'm going to paint up. And so he would be like, and I can't really say the way he used to say it. He goes, listen, buddy. I was like, when you go to the restroom, how does that happen? That goes down. It doesn't go up, does it? <laughs> We're like, no, but I don't care. Till this day, my biggest issue is that that's how I paint. We were at the painted forward event and I was painting from the bottom. Up, <laughs> and I was getting crap about it. You know? <laughs> but that's how I've learned how to paint, you know, and just. So there was a lot of that. There was a lot of me. Um, I always work with older people. So imagine me being, uh, you know, the business owner when I was 24, 25 years old. And most of my painters are well into their 40s, you know, close to 50s. And I would tell them to do something. They look at me like, are you going to tell me? Like, yeah. <laughs> you could be my kid. I'm like... And it was kind of like that struggle that I, I had to let him know, you know, but I didn't want to have kids working with me. You know, I didn't want to have, I wanted people who was responsible. Sure. And so they, and so that set the standard for me because I had to like, like know what, I had to be sharp. You know, I cannot tell these guys, like, this is how you do something. And they're like, oh, show me, you know? And so, uh, so interested in um, how to do the job. So interesting, and and you just get the job. Never, I thought about like, oh, maybe you should have a system in your business. So maybe you should do. It's just at that time, Juan wasn't into that. You know, Juan was into like uh, painting houses, um, managing the job, uh, from the hiring. You know, like. <laughs> Who doesn't hire, you know, know a lot of guys that still do that will hire a guy, a guy shows up to their house. I mean, to their, you know, I used, my shop was, my house was my shop, my office, my storage, my place of, of you know, of residence, everything. It was just my tiny little house. And so um, I remember having painters come into my house and looking for a job. And I'm like, um, oh, hi, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm like, 
Oh, good. It's like, oh, who sent you? This guy. Okay. Can you start tomorrow? Yes. Okay, perfect. Two days later, you're like, you're not a painter. You're not this. And now you have to get rid of them and start all over again. And it just, no processes. And that, I did that for so many years. And I know a lot of guys can, can relate because uh, it was just, it was just like, come in, go, come in, go. And uh, there's no structure. So I ran the our business. I ran the business for over ten years. No structure, just pure hard work, and um, it worked. I'm not gonna lie, but it, it you don't see a future. I I never saw like by the time I'm sixty, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be painting. I felt that I wasn't gonna be painting, but I was still gonna be at least um, running all these guys by then. Sure. So you were, yeah, it was, it was a day-to-day -day grind. Yeah. Basically, and you're kind of just keeping the wheels turning, making sure you get the next job, making sure the, the rat race is taken care of, making sure you, you know how to paint and everything that, that no one's going to show you up and, and you're just going to keep this cycle for 10 years with, without a clear plan or operations or, or, no. or like SOPs or anything like that. You're just, you're just in this rat race. Yeah. You just, what, what is Jason's, Jason called it? The contractor prison. There we go. So that is so true. Yeah. You know, uh, and the thing Jason is, like, Phillips. when we're, yeah, Jason Phillips, when we're in that position, we're inside this little box. And all we can see is inside those, you know, if you have a square box, all you can see is those square walls, and that's all you see. And, um, and, it took me to get out of that box. And I know we're going to talk about this more to realize that oh my god you know there is more out there yeah it's well, like uh episode. it's like the truman show or something you <laughs> right? the truman show? yes yeah. yes ships so and it just talking. hits the wall you know <laughs> opens the doors like oh my goodness i've been living in this little re alternate reality box yeah so that was a lot of i guess that was a lot of the you know with <laughs> With a lot more things, you know, family. Um, when um, when I was brought here, um, I I am the oldest of four uh, kids, and so um, I have three younger sisters. So me being the oldest and my parents always working, I was kind of like the kind of like the father figure in the house. So um, at a young age, you know, for me, it wasn't. I felt that looking for alternatives and stuff was was really not an option because my job was to work and provide you know and so you you have that mentality of just, just you just work you don't have to question things why question things like don't i always hear this don't reinvent the, the wheel the wheel's round why reinvent it you know and uh yeah i grew up to say okay it's round how can i make it faster you know and so yeah. But back then it was like, no, you don't question, uh, you don't look for other options, you you paint, you paint. And I'm not saying there wasn't any other options, just for me there wasn't. You know, for me it was just like you work, you take care of your kid, you take care of your family, and uh, and that's that. You know, you don't you don't go out there and try to see what kind of training you can take. You, you don't do that, you know, there's there's no time for that. Head down, stay in the grind. Yes, sir. And that's, yeah. and I know that there's still, I mean, there's a big, a very large uh, percentage of painting contractors out there in the whole country that are still doing that. And I am thankful for, you know, people like you, for a lot of the guys out there in the industry who are really putting a word out and saying, you know what, there's a lot to do, you know, you know, open your phone, open everything else, and, and you can get there. You know, so yeah. Um, but you back can still then, work hard. You can still. Work oh no, hard, of course. But you're gonna you're gonna work hard at a task that is ultimately gonna make you a whole lot more money. We don't want to jump to a lot, but let me tell you one thing that I've learned. I've learned, I guess, before I always used to say this: I want to free myself from work. I don't want to work as much. I've learned that I work more now than I probably did a few years back. Um, I used to get up late. I used to be out of my house by like 7.30, I'm rushing to work and stuff. 
my alarm goes up at five in the morning. I'm already, you know, <laughs> I'm already, my alarm is like ready to go off. I'm like looking at it like, okay, click, you know. That and, took so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on, you know. And you're actually, but, but, but you actually enjoy it, you know. It, don't, don't be fooled that you, <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I, I don't, I'm going to work less. No, there's, I guess there's, there's more, the more you, you go into your business, the more like when we were going, when we, when I started the business, the only way I grew was like putting more hours into the business. There's no magic, uh, there's no magic one that says, uh, there's only Juan, but no magic one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's not, it's just simply hard work. You know, yeah. just um, I guess the difference is the education and the preparation you, you start looking for. You know, so at that time, we didn't have that. Well, Juan, when, before we wrap this up, I should have done it in the beginning. Can you just give us a brief um, overview, I guess, of your company? If you want to discuss revenue or the kinds of projects you work on, whether you subcontract um, or not, W-2 independent contractors. Let's just get a brief overview of your company before we wrap this one up. Overview company. Um, so we are in beautiful Pebble Beach, California. So if you guys are not uh, people who do not know where that's at, it's in Central California, and it's a golf uh, heaven. And there's a lot of uh, big homes for people who travel from from all over the country. So we have a very unique uh, niche, and then we're next to uh, Silicon Valley, which is where all the tech people started and there's there's a lot of money here so we um, we really focus into getting into that niche of the um uh the industry uh we've created a a, a great relationship and a reputation now for those homes so most of our homes uh, will be a paint job for us can be a, a very small repaint can be about 10 grand um, just wrapped up last year. Uh, no, we wrapped this job this year. Uh, it was a, about 13 month project that was $1.1 million paint job for wow. a residential home. Uh, for a well, residential the, home. Residential home. People oh. and they, and they don't, and it's not their, and it's not their, uh, primary home. They're from England. Wow. And, yes. One point one million dollar house painting project. Paint project, yes. That was just the painting. That's how much it cost. We estimated the job uh for about four and a half, four fifty, four sixty when we first got in there. And then we really specialized in um high end finishes. Um our model is like, you know, give us a challenge, you know, we want a challenge. You have a challenge. We want to take it on. Like you know, when I mean a challenge, we want to anything that's a unique finish or anything that is like a uh, specialty finish, uh, fine paints of Europe, uh, any type of uh, patina job. Um, we we love to take on those projects. Um, it is tough. I really love how the guys do the repaints because it's a lot more manageable and quicker return. For this, you have to have a lot of skilled um, personnel. You know, you have to have sure. a very skilled um, group. And as you know, nowadays, it's very hard to do that. Um, there's less and less of those skilled guys out on the field. So um, that's kind of, that's what we do in our business. We uh, we now operate with, uh, in our office, we have six members in our office, including us. And we oversee production, management, uh, you know, uh, admin. And then um, out on the field right now, we have about 24, no, about 20 guys, our guys. And then we work with uh, other two companies, sister companies that, um, that kind of bring about 10 people into our business as needed. Um, we run a uh, uh, finishing shop as well. So this uh, July 1st, we're moving into our new facility. I mean, we're running a new facility where it's much bigger than the one we had. We had grew our 
I uh, grew our first one like within the first few months we got in there and uh, we're just keep moving into that direction. Yeah. Juan, I appreciate you sharing all that, man. I appreciate this um, trip down memory lane. Even if you made me think about some things I didn't want to think about, that's okay. I'll forgive you. Uh, thanks for being right. Yeah, thanks for sharing it and being vulnerable, man. You really, you gave a lot and you you shared a lot and I do really appreciate that. And I know the next episode, we're leaving a cliffhanger. We're going to get into what changed your life, man. Yeah, no, I'm very, very excited to talk about that. You know, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's amazing how, how things can just flip and, um, you never saw things the way you see them now. And uh, just as gray as it is, it, it creates a brand new challenge. And, uh, but I guess that's what really keeps us going, right? That challenge, the everyday challenge. If we, if we didn't have those challenges, it will be hard for us to get up in the morning, I think. It'd be boring. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't. Us painters don't like to be boring. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Brother, I appreciate you, Juan. We'll uh, look forward to seeing episode two, man. Thank you, brother. Man, thank you so much, man. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. If you want to learn more about the topics we discussed in this podcast and how you can use them to grow your painting business, visit paintermarketingpros.com forward slash podcast for free training, as well as the ability to schedule a personalized strategy session for your painting company. Again, that URL is paintermarketingpros.com forward slash podcast. Hey there, painting company owners. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us your feedback. Let us know how we did. And also, if you're interested in taking your painting business to the next level, make sure you visit the Painter Marketing Pros website at paintermarketingpros.com to learn more about our services. You can also reach out to me directly by emailing me at brandon at paintermarketingpros.com and I can give you personalized advice on growing your painting business. Until next time, keep growing.